So my unit plan was on space, grade 6 uh, level space. I was excited because I knew there was a lot of creative stuff I could do with it. What I did was I, I just made a schedule of all of the lessons that I was going to get to teach while I was there for science. And I just broke it down into the, um, the lessons that I thought needed to be taught based on the curriculum. Um, so then I, I scheduled each lesson on what I wanted to do. Um, and then I went through the curriculum expectations. And I, I simply was like, okay, this one, I want to do this. What curriculum expectations will be covered here? So I went through a list of them all. And eventually I had all the curriculum expectations laid out. And from that, I formed the must know and then the should know. So the must knows I, I listed were the ones that pretty much showed up in, in every lesson. So the components of the solar system was a must know. What bodies in space emit light and what reflects light. So the stars versus the moons and the planets. Um, how humans meet their basic needs in space. How the positions of the earth, moon, and sun affect us. And Canada's major contributions to space exploration. So those I really felt as must, were things that the students needed to know coming out of the lessons. That those I, as a teacher, need to be really clear that were were communicated, that they could answer those coming out of this unit. Um, then there was should knows, things that I thought the kids would find interesting, um, and they should know it, but I wasn't really expecting everything completely in this section to be memorized. So a should know was how to describe the components in the solar system. So size, appearance, value, uh, different types of tools that are, are needed for space exploration. Uh, safety protocol for observing the sun, uh, the proper space vocabulary, although I think that one probably should have been a must-know. Some of the major scientific and technological advances that allows humans to survive in space, and the cost and benefits of space exploration. The could-know I formed from the remaining curriculum expectations, but I also used the diagnostic that I, I did at the beginning of the very first lesson uh, to kind of form what what they could know. Um, so some of the could knows I threw out there was why is Pluto no longer considered a planet? They could know how scientists can research and study other planets, uh, how to make their own models, whether it be for day and night, um, so rotation or revolution for the seasons, um, the phases of the moon, different models like that. Uh, and why we have 30 days in a month, why we have 365 days in a year, and why we have four seasons. So based on their questions and what I really thought would be kind of touched on, but uh, more of it interesting to know. Those are things I, th I thought they could know. So the overviews of the lesson. So I start off my very first lesson. Uh, it's called Blasting Off Into Space. This I designed it more to be a diagnostic. I wanted to know what they knew about space. Uh, versus what they were interested in knowing. So I started off with my minds on it. We played a game uh, in which I gave them the vocabulary that I was going to put on the learning wall, and I asked them, I gave one student a word and another student a definition. And so I just, I varied them, and I had the class come together, uh, or mix together, and, and read the definitions, read the words, and, and see if they could put any of the, the correct definitions with the words. I told them, I said, I didn't want you, I don't care if you did well, I just wanted to see what you knew and what you didn't know. And they actually, some of the words that I didn't think they would get, they got. And so, it was a good learning experience for me, uh, and it really set me up to, to know what vocabulary I could use, or I needed to explain when I used moving forward. So after that, um, we went back to the laptops and we, we used Lino or Lino it. And I showed the kids how to add stickies. And I basically, I said, I gave them on the PowerPoint some ideas of, of things I wanted to see from them. So I wanted to see what they knew. I wanted to see what they wanted to know um, or interesting things that they thought uh, the rest of the class should know. Um, anything. I, I said, put your thoughts about space on the lino board. And uh, this thing filled up quick. The kids really took to the lino board. And there were so many questions on there. And I, I initially started sorting them. But it was so overwhelming with the, 
the different vast array of questions. So that went really well because that gave me uh, a good diagnostic of where the kids' heads were at, what they wanted to know about space. So I could really kind of um, modify my whole unit to really answer their questions. And then I did my final diagnostic test. This was uh, an assessment uh, for learning. I wanted to see what, what they knew. So here I did, uh, I used a website called Socrative. Um, you could do a lot of different things, but what I decided to do was a space race. And so the students were able to log on into a classroom that I had created, a digital classroom, and I had prepared a quiz. Once they answered the question, their spaceship on my screen, on the big um, screen in front of the classroom, their spaceship moved forward. And so they could kind of see, and it was just like at a carnival, how you would see your, your guy move forward. And so they would race to answer these questions. So at the end of the, the quiz, it was right near the end of the period. Um, instantly, as soon as the last student finished, I was able to get an Excel spreadsheet of all of their answers, correct, incorrect, were all highlighted for me. And um, that was a really neat tool for me to have moving forward. So the next lesson was day and night. And so we go, went back to the first lesson where we, we learned some of the words that were now on the learning wall that the kids could see. And two of the words that they had mixed up were rotation and revolution. And this was a big concept moving forward. So we did spend quite a bit of time on rotation and revolution. I had students come up and model it in front of all the class. Um, then... I had brought in uh, a bunch of lamps and we had used um, a couple of globes that we had from other teachers and we used uh, just balls from our DPA bin and we, we had six groups and we turned the lights off and they experimented with rotation to, to explain day and night. And so they, they went off on that. After they did that, I gave them about five minutes to do that. Then I asked them to take some notes uh, and write a descriptive paragraph explaining why we have day and night using the word rotation in there and and access. I started talking about sundials and we made our own sundials with a template that you'll see on the screen. So the second lesson was called reasons for the seasons. I asked them to draw what they thought was the earth, the path of the earth's orbit around the sun. Most of them drew an oval with, that was unevenly balanced with the earth being furthest away from the sun during winter. And that was what I was expecting them to do, and I was glad that they did it. Uh, and so then introduced another term, and the word was angle of tilt. And so we discussed the angle of tilt, and then I had all of the kids come and make a giant circle in the center of the room, and we, we actually physically leaned forward as if we were on an angle of tilt and moved around the circle showing why when our head had leaned um, furthest away from the sun during the winter but it was actually leaning closer during the summer why that was um, and it actually took quite a while um, to do the minds on in that action part and um, we, we pretty much just had time to do a descriptive paragraph of why we had um, seasons using the word revolution and axis of tilt. And I asked them to draw a diagram and that was about it. So the, the next lesson, my fourth lesson, was on constellations. And initially I was not looking forward to this one, but it ended up being really cool and a lot of fun. Um, it started off, I found this really cool app for my iPad called um, Sky Free View. And basically, when I would hold my iPad, it would create this, um, it would show where all the stars were in the sky, where the moon was, based on where we were. Even though we were inside the classroom, it looked as if I, I was looking at the stars in the middle of the day, and it was really neat. And what was cool was, when I found a constellation, if I held it on it, the the app would connect the constellations and show you the constellation. So my mind's on, I went around and I pointed the, um, the projector actually on the ceiling and had all the kids lay on the floor as if we were stargazing. And I put some, um, 
space type music on in the background and we turn the lights off and we're all laying on the ground with a piece of paper and I just moved around finding different constellations and and asked the kids to name them. We discussed the names they chose and then showed the real name and then there was another <laughs> setting on this app which was really cool that I could put the picture and so it was really neat for the kids to see and I actually really enjoyed it too. The kids were probably the most engaged um, they had been in, in all of the three lessons. So then we moved back to our desks and I gave them a handout uh, at the beginning and on the back of the handout had a, a star map on it and there was a number of constellations on there. What I did, I, I asked them to, to find a constellation that they thought looked cool and on a black piece of paper I gave them, I asked them to draw it out and then punch holes where each star would go so that if they held it up to the light they would get to see um, their constellation. And then we took chalk and we connected the dots and we put them on our learning wall. And then for homework, um, they had to go do some research on their, their constellation. So they had to give me the name. They had to tell me what the picture was um, with an image. Uh, so if it was a bear, I needed to see the bear printed out. And then the story behind why the constellation was named that name. And so by the end of it, we had on our learning wall, a whole bunch of constellations that with the picture next to it and the explanation of why so that they could learn from each other and it was really cool. They really enjoyed it and it was a nice addition to the learning wall. So my fifth lesson was on the moon. I myself have been confused by the phases of the moon and I really felt it needed to be broken down. So. I went to our vocabulary first and I started at our vocabulary. And the best way for me to do this was to really get um, these, sh I, I took, I found a really cool video on YouTube explaining all the moon phases, um, but I didn't like the narrator and I thought, felt it was really too long and it went through these, these concepts way too quick. But what I did was I was able to shorten the video, cut them down to like five second clips of when, of the moon actually moving and you'll probably see it on this video. And I was able to loop those videos over and over and over again on the PowerPoint so they could see that a waxing moon was one that was growing in size. And they just kept seeing it loop as it was growing and I would talk about it growing in ways for us to remember. Then we had, I had explained the vocabulary terms crescent and gibbous. I was able to really break down my, um, my phase of the moon lesson and make oversimplify it. And I thought our kids really understood it. Then, um, then I had the chance to do a really fun science experiment with the kids that I called Crater Face. And um, I gave each six groups um, a bin of flour. And basically I had brought in a whole bunch of rocks and this is where we integrated our measurement unit um, for math. and. They had a measuring, a meter stick, and they dropped different rocks, big rock versus a small rock, from a lower height versus a smaller height. And so they were using um, an observation sheet that I made. Um, the reason I made an observation sheet was there are some students that were in our class that were on IEPs, and I felt like to give them the best opportunity to succeed, um, would, I would break it down for them and really simplify the observation so they knew what they needed to, um, what step they needed to be on and what they would, what rock to drop and what, what heights to drop it from. Formed. And the purpose of this was um, to understand why the moon's surface looks like it does with so many impact craters of different sizes. To see how the, the mass of a meteorite hitting the surface of the moon changes how the speed of it changes the size of the impact crater and how the density of the moon's surface changed. And so the kids really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. So my sixth lesson was Canada, Canada's contribution to space exploration. And when I sat down to plan this lesson or the whole unit, this is probably the lesson I looked forward to least. But now I think this is one of my favorite lessons of the whole unit. 
Um, and it really started with the Minds On. The Minds On uh, really captured the kids' attention and interest. So basically, upon planning it, Canada's biggest contribution, in my opinion, was manipulation in space. Um, producing the Canada Arm and uh, a robot called Dexter that really could do fine manipulation. So my mind's on, I played a game in which the, the goal was to tie the shoelace of one of the students in the class. Uh, so basically, I had different astronauts come forward and try to tie the shoelaces. The catch was that they really didn't have um, their full manipulation to do what they thought they could do. So the first student that came forward, I put my giant winter jacket on him, uh, giant oven mitts, and I sat him in the teacher's rolling chair. And we put a timer on the board, and we said, go. The moment he went and reached for the, uh, for the laces, I started moving his chair around. By the time it got to a minute, I said, okay, time's up. And he was so frustrated, he's like, I couldn't even reach the laces. And well, the, that, the point of that was to show the kids, you know, how frustrating it would be for astronauts to try and do something and be floating away from it. And that really captured the kids' interest and attention as we talked about how the Canada Arm, how the Dexter Robot, and, and all the other different Canadian contributions, how they've really helped uh, the International Space Station, space station and, and all the astronauts around the world. And so we really enjoyed this lesson and learning about Canada's contribution. And then finally we wrapped it up with uh, talking, I put pictures of each of the different Canadian astronauts like Mark Garneau. Uh, and, I, and I finished off with Chris Hadfield who just days before had taken over um, the, you know, the captaincy of the International Space Station. And I showed a video of that and it was, it was a great time, great lesson. And was really excited upon my reflections on the Canada's contribution to space. So the last two lessons, um, I didn't actually get to because of a health issue. Uh, I was really excited to do these ones as well. And so these were going to cover living in space. And the other one was comparing the planets. Uh, some of the highlights from those gave them a, a scenario where we crashed onto a planet. And basically I had them order from 1 to 15 what they thought was most important and least important. And they could only take about 10 items and they had to leave at least five behind. The other, the other fun minds on included this, uh, this nifty toilet paper roll. Tell us how far the planets were in comparison to, the, to each other and the sun. For them to see a scale model of, of how far each planet was from each other. They weren't like bam, 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 bam. Um, and then that would be our, that was our minds on then we would move into learning about each planet So for my learning wall visually on in the classroom I, I wanted it to be really awesome. I wanted to obviously I wanted to stand out and to catch the kids eyes But there were other things I wanted it to be really colorful I wanted it to be practical so where the kids could actually use it to, to strengthen and support the learnings in the in the lessons um, but I also wanted to be practical in the sense of, yes, this is an assignment for Teachers College, but I wanted to do something that was time efficient, that I, you know, I wasn't spending hours and hours and, and a lot of money on a bulletin board that I never would do outside of Teachers College. I was really pleased with the final outcome. Uh, I found two and a half uh, Bristol boards, no, three and a half Brist black Bristol boards. So I cut them up, um, put them on the wall, I used really colorful paper and I found a couple of images online, printed them off and I hung our globe and that was, that was about it. And then I left space to, to add student work throughout the, uh, the unit. And I thought that the kids really enjoyed having the learning wall and I was able to take things like their silly sentences, their sundials, their constellations and, and put them up there. And, uh, and that, that was something that we really enjoyed. So this is my space unit and thank you for watching.